what, what's peaceful to me is that morning at eight o'clock in the morning, I had just gotten the kids off to school. She gave me a call and we went through what the evening was when she was gonna get home that night. And then it was, I love you, travel safe. And, and, uh, and love was in our heart. And my final words to her, I love you, travel safe. So. In that moment, what Michael Reardon couldn't possibly know is that would be the last conversation he would have with his wife, Jennifer. I just fell in love at first sight. Jennifer was 15 and I was 17. Boy, you really did grow up together. We were, we were just babies. Their nearly 30-year love story came to a devastating end last week when Jennifer was killed during a mid-air disaster on a Southwest Airlines flight. Jennifer was an Albuquerque banking executive seen here in this video for Wells Fargo. We all should strive to reach that type of behavior always. The legacy that I want to leave um, in, in our community are four, four things. Uh, I want to be remembered for being kind, loving, caring, and sharing. Ethical behavior is absolutely critical for New Mexico. She was on her way home from New York to her husband and their kids, 12-year-old daughter Avery and 10-year-old son Josh. Jennifer was one of 144 passengers and five crew members on board Southwest Flight 1380. Long flights, I always sit in the window. Holly Mackey boarded the plane early. I had initially taken the window seat, and then I'd had a really large cup of coffee and thought, I'm going to be inconveniencing everybody because I'm going to need to get up multiple times. Southwest doesn't assign seat, so passengers can choose. Mackey moved to the aisle. 14C, a 12-year-old girl sat in the middle and in that window seat, 14A. And that's a seat where Jennifer Reardon ended up sitting. Yeah. She's had a very warm smile. I wish I had talked with her more. Flight 1380 left New York's LaGuardia at 10.43 a.m. At 11.04, the plane hit cruising altitude, 32,000 feet. Four minutes later, the left engine exploded. The number one engine failure. Radar shows the track as the plane is diverted to Philadelphia. Oh, well, we've got injured passengers. Injured passengers, okay. They said there was a hole and, and uh, someone went out. Um, I'm sorry, you said there was a hole and somebody went out? Everybody breathe, relax. Everybody the window where Reardon was sitting shattered and the air pressure sucked the 43-year-old mother of two partway out the window. From about her, her rib cage was out the window. Her seat belt was fastened, thankfully, very, very tight and low, and it was holding her. Mackie says she and the 12-year-old girl tried to pull Jennifer back in, even as they could feel the air suction pulling them toward the busted window, but they weren't strong enough. I did think that we were probably next. Uh, to get pulled out of the plane. So I, I wrapped around the girl and I pulled her over to me so she was farther from the window. And I, I put my hand on Jennifer's back so then if she was conscious or could feel anything, she would at least know that we were there. Because I thought, if I ever... If I ever had a conversation with her family, I would want to be able to tell them that she wasn't alone. Somebody screamed and we realized what had happened when the window went out. As the plane descended, two other passengers, Tim McGinty and firefighter Andrew Needham, managed to pull Jennifer inside and start CPR. I'm no different than any other firefighter in this, uh, in this country. For some reason, whatever reason that is, it was me that day. The plane landed just before 11.30 in Philadelphia. Reardon was pronounced dead at the hospital. God put us all on that plane for a reason. Don't know why. Back in Albuquerque, Michael Reardon was at lunch with a friend when his phone rang. The chaplain at the hospital called and said, are you married to Jennifer Reardon? And I said, yes. I was like, I need to have the doctor talk to you. And then I, before the doctor could call, I was able to click on a, a new site and I saw one passenger was, was brought to the hospital. I'm like, okay, but if the whole plane didn't crash, she can't be injured that bad. She's just in a hospital, but I can get out there and I can hold her hand and, and love on her. It can't be bad, it just can't be bad. And then two minutes later, I got a call from the doctor saying, we're sorry, we tried everything we could, but uh, she couldn't make it. Immediately thought of the kids and now you tell your kids that their mom's gone. So tell me, how you dealt with that. No parent is ever prepared for that. 
I just held their little hands and we took a knee and I said, uh, uh, mommy's not gonna come home, guys. Um, but, uh, but we're gonna live our, the rest of our life with mommy in our hearts and, and in the way that she wanted us to, to be. Investigators now saying a broken fan blade caused the engine to rip apart in midair. Oh, so think about a piece of metal or a piece of plastic where if you bend it back and forth enough, it eventually cracks. That's what's happening to these blades. They're being used so much that for some reason, which engineers are going to have to find out, they're cracking in ways that they should never crack. Within days, the FAA ordered emergency inspections of fan blades on similar engines. This is a real science to be able to look at as, as metal gets older, as machines get older, to be able to predict where this fatigue will next cause a problem. To get the inspections done, Southwest Airlines has been canceling dozens of flights every day this week. The airline saying, we will continue our work to minimize flight disruptions by performing inspections overnight while aircraft are not flying and utilizing spare aircraft when available. Southwest Airlines said it began proactively performing ultrasonic inspection of all fan blades last November and voluntarily started inspecting their entire 737 fleet before the FAA's order. The NTSB investigation into Flight 1380 will take months. Relax. Everybody breathe. Relax. For now, Michael Reardon says he's just thankful to the people who were there with his wife in her final moments. I received the names of the people that were sitting nearest to her and uh, knowing that they were showing the kindness and care that they were. So it's, uh, it's going to be a difficult conversation and I'm not ready to have it, but I just want them to know that. On Sunday, thousands gathered with the family not to mourn, but to celebrate Jennifer's life. Why is everybody so quiet? This is a celebration. It was the only time in the last week that I've had that I felt at peace. It was just uplifting and it was... Uh, and I just really embodied her so much. At the end of that night, it was just so perfect for Jennifer. We felt like she was just looking out over us with a checkbox saying, yes, that's what I would have wanted to check. Michael says it's the couple's children, Avery and Josh, who keep him right. going every day. What did you want to say? And you had the kids up there. That yeah. was important to you. Absolutely. And, and they were hesitant, but it meant the world to me. I, I, I told them that they are my rocks now. I, I, when I look at those two sets of eyes, that's what gets me through the next minute, the next hour, and the days so ahead. For Nightline, I'm Martha Raddatz. Our hearts go out to Michael and his family. You should know that some 60 airlines worldwide are now racing to check older engines for signs of metal fatigue over the next few weeks. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.